Hello out there. Today we are going to look at uh, Poisson's equation. Um, and what this is, is a PDE grad squared u equals some function. Of course, this thing is uh, the second derivative of u with respect to x and then y added together, our usual Laplace formula. And so it's basically the non-homogeneous version of our uh, Laplace equation. That's called Poisson's equation. Let's give it a name over here. There. And uh, so, we're, again, we're gonna, this is a two-dimensional uh, expression. And instead of being a steady state heat uh, distribution on a rectangle, uh, it's a steady state distribution, let's say, of heat uh, under some forcing. Um, so what might, uh, how might the system equilibrate in that, in that sense? So, um, we saw how to deal with non-homogeneous uh, boundaries so far on, uh, to that on a rectangle and the idea here was we would take uh, let's say this expression where we had uxx plus uyy equals zero and uh, we would split it up into a sum of problems where we basically have uh, homogeneous conditions and then we have um, you know, one boundary that's non-homogeneous, and then we move through like that. And what that gave us was one direction, like here, that is homogeneous. Not necessarily Dirichlet, it could be Neumann, or it could be Robin, it um, could be mixed, something like that. But we have a homogeneous direction, and that allows us to uh, formulate eigenfunctions. And then we move in the other direction and exploit those eigenfunctions to build up our solution. That was our old approach. And so now we have... Uh, a non-homogeneous PDE uh, layered on top of potentially non-homogeneous boundary conditions. Okay, so now we're going to uh, up the situation with non-homogeneous PDEs. So I'm just going to draw uh, a picture of what we might have. Okay, so again we have this rectangle here. And I'm going to write these in a in Dirichlet form, which is going to be our, our first focus, uh, but they don't have to be in general. But on the bottom and the top, we have some functions of x, f1 and f2, and on the left and right, we have some functions of y, g1 and g2. And then in the middle here, we have Poisson's equation. So non-homogeneous boundaries, non-homogeneous PDEs all set upon one another, and we need to... Um, somehow deal with all of those. And we're going to use the exact same decomposition approach, noting that um, if I break this up into a sum of two problems, uh, a homogeneous one and a non-homogeneous one, I can just simply sum those results together to satisfy my non-homogeneous PDE. Okay, And what I mean by that is I am going to make this equal to a problem on a rectangle Uh, with my non-homogeneous PDE, but I'm going to make all the boundaries equal to zero on this thing, right there. And then on top of that, I'm going to sum on it another solution. Let's call this one over here. Uh, let's say I solved all this, and I would get a U1. And then if I solved all this fella, I would get a U2. But what I'm going to solve here is a homogeneous analog of Poisson's equation, which is, of course, just Laplace's equation. But I'm going to have the non-homogeneous boundaries on this part. So there's my F1, there's my F2, my G1, and my G2. All right. Now, this piece over here, 
we've already solved it. We spent the last, uh, before we did the uh, Laplace on a circle, this is what we were doing here. So we already dealt with this. And I just mentioned it a few minutes ago, what did we do? We break it up into, in this case, four separate problems where we have one non-homogeneous boundary in each of the four problems and three homogeneous boundaries. And we do a whole lot, a lot of uh, algebra work and we spit out U1, U2, U3, U4, uh, and we compile it all together. Um, that's bad notation because I've already got U1 and U2 defined here, but you get what I'm saying here. Those would be four separate solutions that together would give me my, in this case, U2. So really all I've got to do is figure out what do I do with this new problem. Okay, so this is our uh, new problem to solve. And so the first point is that if I have non-homogeneous boundaries, I can deal with that separately from the non-homogeneous uh, forcing term in the PDE. That's okay. All right. So we only need to deal uh, with Poisson's equation. With homogeneous boundaries, not necessarily Dirichlet, but we'll uh, keep them that way uh, for our first exposition here. All right, so what I'm going to first do is um, imagine what I might do uh, basically by taking my old approach and uh, adapting it here. Okay, so let's just go through that. And then I'm, I'm going to, uh, we're going to do a different approach. And, and the different approach also works, um, but it's also going to uh, open up new avenues of solution for us. So it's, it's worthwhile beyond just this particular kind of problem. All right. So what do we got here? One approach. Okay. And again, this is built off of our previous methods. I would go U equals separation of variables, capital X times capital Y in the associated homogeneous problem, which is grad squared u equals zero. All right, I then go to say xn double prime plus lambda xn equals zero, and I would solve this thing. I'd get my eigenfunctions. Sine n pi x over a. Oh, some kid's toy is going crazy over there, let me pause. All right, good to go. Sine n pi x over a, these are my eigenfunctions. All right. And of course my eigenvalues, lambda, n pi over a, and these are squared. I'd have my second ODE, yn double prime, and it's minus lambda yn this time. Okay, just like back when we did Laplace's equation. Uh, I would. I know my lambdas now. I'd plug into into the PDE uh, my x and my y, but I'm not going to solve my y. So I would have uh, the sum of all of my uh, n expressions with each of the eigenvalues, and I would write it something like this. I'd have the ODE y n double prime minus lambda, and I know lambda as n pi over a squared yn sine n pi x over a, those are my x n terms, and I would make that equal to now the non-homogeneous term. I would take this f, I'd expand in my eigenfunctions, in the x uh, terms up there, the sine n pi x over a, and that would look like um, the sum n equals 1 to infinity of some f sub n of y sine n pi x over a. So coefficients that depend on y in this case. 
plugging that expansion in, then we can just basically match the coefficients, which gives us a set of ODEs. yn double prime minus n pi over a squared yn equals these y dependent coefficients f n y and then I have these zero boundaries okay and this is good for n equals one two da da da, da. I'd solve these and I'd throw it all back together and have my full solution, u as the sum of my x and y n terms from n equals 1 to infinity. So that would be kind of my, my old approach on this, and I'm going to show you a slightly different approach, similar in, in style, uh, but a, a different uh, uh, starting point. All right, so let's get a new, new sheet back. Let me go up a little bit here. Okay, this is, the, the, this is the, the one that we have already a technique to deal with. Okay, we've done that already. This is the one, the new problem we have to solve. But look, all the boundaries there are homogeneous. Now, it's set up in a Dirichlet form, and that's motivating the specific sine sine uh, format of this eigenfunction. I'm using the phi mn includes two signs. If I had Neumann or some mixed boundaries, uh, that phi mn would take a slightly different form that you can probably already predict. It might have cosines in it for Neumann. It might have sine m plus a half pi x over a if it was a mixed condition, something like that. Um, but we're just going to do the Dirichlet case here. Anyway, uh, homogeneous boundaries, non-homogeneous PDE, and I've just generated uh, a particular phi mn that's going to satisfy all of those boundaries. So it seems like a great place to start. Okay. And we're going to here do a, another solution approach. Now this is called the method of eigenfunction expansion, but I'm going to just mention it's 2D. I mean, much of what we've been doing is <laughs> eigenfunction expansion. All right. But here what I'm going to do is uh, consider a function, but it's now, instead of my eigenfunctions being only dependent on x or possibly y, I'm going to have this uh, phi sub mn of x, y equal sine m pi x over a sine n pi y over b. And this is going to be um, my new eigenfunction. And you can see it's slightly different than the old ones. It depends on both x and y. And I can move through values of m and n uh, and generate different sets of these eigenfunctions. Uh, but for every m, I have infinitely many n. And for every n, I have infinitely many m. And so I'm joining these together in a product. Now, uh, this just kind of came out of thin air. Of course, uh, probably there's elements of that that look familiar to you, so you're probably seeing uh, why it's of that form uh, in some sense. But explicitly, why this form? Uh, if you look at phi sub mn of 0 and y, if we plug in x equals 0, well, you get 0. And similarly, phi sub m n of a and y, that's when you get sine m pi a over a. You also get zero there, because sine of m pi, where m is an integer, will give you zero. And similarly, you're probably seeing where this goes, phi sub m n of x and zero is, is zero, and phi m n of uh, x and b is also equal to zero, for the same reason you get sine n pi, where n is an integer. So, what's the beauty of this? If you look at all these, the phi sub mn satisfies the boundary conditions for my problem. Why? So,
all well and good, I can satisfy my boundaries. Is there anything else uh, beneficial about this particular Phi MN? And uh, of course, the, the only way to get at that is what happens with this particular thing when it goes into my PDE. Uh, well, something intriguing happens. All right, so plugging phi m n into PDE gives something nice. That is, I'm going to take grad squared of phi m n, which is the x derivative. And that, of course, lands only on the m pi x over a part, sine m pi x over a. So I have sine m pi y over b that is left alone. And then I have sine m pi x over a. There's a pi in there. And that thing has the derivatives with respect to x on it, second derivative. And then I have the sine m pi x over a sine n pi y over b, and that thing has the two y derivatives on it. That doesn't look like a y. Y, y. Well, just the chain rule here, nothing beyond first year calc. So uh, negative m pi over a squared sine n pi y over b sine m pi x over a. So I've just got an m pi over a out twice with the two derivatives and a negative has come out because it goes sine cos minus sine in the second derivative. And very similarly over here, uh, I get uh, minus n pi over b squared uh, sine m pi x over a sine n pi y over b. That's what I get when I apply the the, uh, the PDE operator onto phi m n. And of course I can uh, make this a little bit nicer. I can group the m pi over a squared plus n pi over b squared terms. And then I just get an m pi x over a, n pi y over b in the signs there. All right, well, what does this mean? It means that applying the uh, grad squared operator, or the Laplace operator, onto my phi mn gives me back my phi mn together with a constant. So it's very similar in, in this same idea uh, about eigenfunctions, eigenvalues, where the application of uh, some matrix A, let's say, on a vector uh, can be condensed down uh, in the direction of the eigen functions or uh, eigenvectors in the, in the matrix case to a constant lambda that gets multiplied by it. So said maybe more succinctly, that is grad squared phi m n is, I'm going to put negative, I'm going to introduce a different notation here, lambda m n phi m n, okay, where now this lambda m n is somehow this, this maybe two-dimensional analog of my previous notion of the eigenvalue. So in this case, it's going to be m pi over a squared plus n pi over, sorry, that's a b, over b squared. And now I jointly have m and n being one, two, three, and so on. m occupying them all, n occupying them all, they're not the same. Uh, this thing up here, uh, if you're interested, is called the Helmholtz equation. So that might seem advantageous if we can apply our PDE operator onto this phi mn and just get a constant that arises out of it. Okay, so uh, I've said it already, but just to be sure, our notation is good and our language is good. The phi mn's are now called, as we have in the past, these are called eigenfunctions. And the lambda mn, for any pair of m and n, are the eigenvalues. 
So you can see it's very similar in, in, uh, in style uh, and approach that we've been doing in the 1D version of this, but uh, just some new details. And so we can now say that the effect of the Laplacian operator, grad squared, on an eigenfunction is it's quite simple. It just multiplies the eigenfunction by some constant. Okay, now, what's, what do I do with this? What's my idea? As usual, I'm going to try to express my solution as a linear combination via the principle of superposition as a linear combination of our eigenfunctions phi m n. So I'm not just pulling these out of thin air, I'm going to use them. I've already shown they satisfy the boundary conditions and now I've shown that the uh, Laplacian operator on these eigenfunctions gives me a constant times the eigenfunctions. Okay. Let's get a new sheet. So try to express my solution u of x, y as a linear combination of the phi m n's. Now that I have m and n both ranging from 1 to infinity, I have to have a double sum in this linear combination. So a double infinite series, n equals 1 to infinity, m equals 1 to infinity. There are some coefficients in this linear combination, but I have to keep track of both m and n in this expression. And then I have the eigenfunction phi m n, which I'll write out uh, m pi x over a sine n pi y over b. There we go. Now the Laplacian operator on this gives me the same result, sine m pi x over a sine n pi y over b, except it introduces this negative lambda m n. So I can apply grad squared u as the sum, it's 1 to infinity, the sum m equals 1 to infinity. I'm going to put the negative in front that comes out of the application of this. The, the e m n's stick around, those coefficients. I have my lambda m n's, which I will write out as m pi over a squared plus n pi over b squared. They come out, and then I just have my regular phi m n. Now, grad squared u, having applied that, equals, I still have that non-homogeneous function over here, f of x, y. So now I've plugged in to my form of u, uh, I've plugged that into the PDE operator, and I've set it equal to the right-hand side of the PDE, that non-homogeneous function f of x, y. So now I've got everything inside of Poisson's equation. I'm just going to look at this thing for a second. Um, you know, there's an extra little uh, lambda m n sitting in there, but this is of a slightly different nature than the series I've dealt with before. Usually they're all a uh, single infinite series. Uh, this thing has the elements of our old Fourier series, uh, but it's a double sum, and uh, well, it's got a name. called a double Fourier sine series. You might imagine double Fourier cosine series, and on and on and on. Now, what can I do with this? I'm going to introduce a little theorem here. Not going to get too much into it, but just uh, uh, something we can state to move along. Suppose we have some f of x, y. Uh, that's defined for all uh, x between 0 and a, and y between 0 and b. That's all I really need. Then we have the double Fourier uh, 
uh, sign series expansion. Which looks like f of x, y. Okay, the double sum from n to infinity, 1 to infinity, m from 1 to infinity. I'll introduce b, m, n as these uh, coefficients. Sine m pi x over a, sine n pi y over b. So we have the double Fourier sine series expansion for f of x, y that exists provided f is defined on these uh, domains. Um, and what about these bmn's? These coefficients bmn are bmn is equal to, before it was 2 over l, now maybe unsurprisingly it's 4 over ab. So 2 over a and 2 over b multiplied together. Um, integral 0 to b, integral 0 to a of f of x, y, sine m pi x over a, sine n pi y over b. dx on the inside, dy on the outside. So now we have a double integral as well that defines my b, m, n. So um, again, we're not going to get really nitty-gritty into this theorem. We have it that we have the expression for these coefficients uh, and that we have the Fourier, the double Fourier sine series expansion for this function. Um, and uh, just in terms of motivation, perhaps, uh, maybe I'll, I'll motivate where the BMNs come from, but we're not going to formally prove this. So we ask, where does this come from? Um, I would just say we use the typical Fourier uh, method. And uh, the little integral trick here is if I have now a double integral from 0 to b and 0 to a of this sine m pi x over a sine n pi y over b, uh, multiplied by some other pair of sine, let's say m hat pi x over a sine n hat pi y over b. Right there, dx dy. Basically, this equals zero anytime m and n are not equal to the exact values of m hat and n hat. And in the single case where m and n match m hat and n hat, you get the a, b over 4 when there's equality. And so what do you do? You take the whole expression, you multiply by uh, these other eigenfunctions for varying values of m hat and n hat. Everything disappears except when m equals when m equals m hat and n equals n hat. And that allows the a, b over 4 to live on in that single case. Then it gets divided on the other side and appears as a 4 over a, b in my b, m, n. That's what's going on here. It's all the same stuff. I just have a double integral that I'm exploiting uh, right here to give me 0 as opposed to single integrals before. Okay, so what do I do now? Well, uh, I've got this expansion, and I can apply this expansion to uh, the PDE, and so we're ready to get going on this. All right. So we're going to apply double Fourier expansion to our solution. So remember, my solution is u is the sum n equals 1 to infinity, sum m equals 1 to infinity. I had this emn sine 
m pi x over a sine n pi y over b. And um, if I look at grad squared u equals f of x y, I know both of those expressions. I can expand the right-hand side in the eigenfunctions, and I can expand the, or I, I can apply the grad squared operator, the Laplace operator, on the left-hand side, and match coefficients in each of those cases. And when I do that, remember when, when I applied the grad squared operator to u, I would just get a negative lambda mn, and there's also these e mn terms, and then all the sine expressions. And then on the right-hand side, the double Fourier sine expansion of f of x, y will give me the bmn's times those same sine sine eigenfunctions. And so again, if I'm just equating coefficients, I just get the bmn's over here. So that's the 4 over a b, double integral, 0 to b, 0 to a, and then the um, Fourier expansion of f. So f of x, y in these phi m, n terms. So sine m pi x over a, sine n pi y over b. God, I've written those two functions a lot now. dx, dy. Now, we're getting close. One more round of this. E, m, n is the only thing I need to know to write my full solution for u. All right, look up here got my solution form, the EMNs are chosen to satisfy this equation here. And the EMNs are basically there. I just got to divide by the lambda MNs, negative lambda MN uh, technically. And so IE, the remaining piece, the EMN is given by negative four over I'll be explicit about this now. Lambda mn, which is m pi over a squared plus n pi over b squared. There's also an a, b on the bottom. And then I have my two integrals. There, sine n pi y over b dx dy. There we have it. We'll give that a blue box as well. This is the expression for my coefficients for my u up top here. And that u will satisfy uh, Poisson's equation.